The robots are coming. The robots are coming. Or are they already here? Uh, well, not that long ago, Tesla made a big announcement about robots and it was laughed at. And now there are well over 100 very serious companies pursuing it very aggressively. And where are they at? What is the future? And is it here? That's what we're going to discuss. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Well, when discussing robots, there are few better people than Herbert from Brighter, who has a company called Human Robots. And the only people I know better equipped to talk about it than Herbert are people who are working with Herbert. Uh, Dr. Scott Walter, for example, CERN Basher, and others. This is a uh, this industry stands to be fairly big, would you agree? <laughs> fairly big. It is absolutely big. It is massive. It is going to be the single largest industry ever, 10 times larger than the auto industry, than the energy industry, than pharmaceutical industry. We're not, talk we're not just talking about the $44 trillion of human labor, the labor market, but it goes beyond that, right? Because it's not just humanoid bots. It's going to be all forms of bots. Anything that can move with a camera is going to be intelligent. You can speak to it. It'll speak back to you. It can learn tasks. It can share whatever it's learned with every other bot that's out there. So we call that humanoids plus human scale bots. Of course, there's the industrial robots as well. And they're all going to be working with humans. And so the, the company that I formed with Scott Walter, John Gibbs, and Cern Basher is called Human Bots. And it's going to help any business who has um, what we call the new mixed labor workforce. And this is like the ability to manage all of these form factors, including humans working together. Every single business, every single software that they're using today, it's going to have to be uh, changed and, 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 you know, can be worked on. And that's what we'll do is we'll help those businesses keep, keep that, you know, real time utilization of the mixed labor. Um, you're asking the question, you know, is it coming or is it here? And the answer is robots are here. They are already working. They're already being used as useful work, meaning businesses today actually buy the bots today in replacement of humans and certain not. OK, I'll be careful. It's not replacement of humans because many of these bot companies, they refuse to sell to companies if it's in replacement of humans. Um, it's, it's more of doing jobs that they can't fulfill and then jobs that humans don't want. But the point is that it actually is already considered to be useful work. And useful work is a terminology, but it's also measurable. It's like the bot has to be priced at the right price. It has to be able to move at the right speed. It has to be, um, right, the, the, all the downtime it needs for battery uh, and so forth. It, not, it needs to be able to do the job with the right quality. If you can do all that, then a business will decide to do this. And there are many businesses today that are using bots today. So one example is Digit, which is more of a very, very specifically focused on the pick and place in a factory. Um, companies like Spanx Underwear is already physically using them in their warehouses. Amazon, of course, famously is already using not only their, all their, the mobile, it's called autonomous mobile robots, the ones that are in wheels that are picking up pallets and not just the physical arms, but actual humanoid bots, human-like bots, that's already doing it today. Um, and so they're already there. And then there's a company called GXO that many companies like Sanctuary and Digit um, Agility has partnered with that is basically the warehouse uh, supplier. And so they have the contract with thousands of companies, retail, manufacturing, that helps them automate their businesses. And they've started to introduce these humanoid bots there as well. So. This, this notion that they're coming and it'll be years away is just completely false. At this point, there are many bots that are already physically working that you can already autonomously train that's already being able to do quality work. So that's the big misunderstanding is people think, well, these are fantasy like flying cars or self-driving cars. Uh, but we have self-driving cars. We have helicopters. Yeah. Uh, and for that matter, uh, we have robots doing real work in real commercial applications already today. BMW's training some new robots I read. That's the one with um, the chat GPT, I think. Uh, figure, yeah, figure AI. Oh, so figure is, is yeah. and these are, they're in training, they're doing actual things. Yeah. There, it wasn't that long ago that we thought that, mach that computers could not replace human thought. 
And in the last few years, we've seen that a lot of the things that we thought were too creative for computers can be replaced. And even more recently, we thought that robots could not replace the physical things. So now it's anything that can be thought can be thought by a computer. Yeah. And anything that can be done will soon be able to be done by a robot. It's now, what is it, July? And we're turning August. In January, people were very, very skeptical. They said, um, you can't build a human or robot at scale. Uh, it's too costly because of the actuators. There's 40 actuators per bot. Those are the, the motors that move. There's one in the neck, for example, that makes it do this, right? And in the whole body, there's 40. But if those actuators cost $1,000 each, you're spending $40,000. And then they said, you can never train a, a human or bot um, that is all coded. Everything you've ever seen with Boston Dynamics, every time you've ever seen now those, you know, beautiful flips and code, uh, you know, uh, jumps and all that, those are all coded <laughs> and uh, yeah. physically coded. So somebody had to like, you know, time it right and do it exactly correct to make it happen. But nowadays... Uh, they discovered that it's actually easy, surprisingly easy, to train a human or bot uh, to, to a task. So there's a couple ways of doing it. Uh, three Stanford researchers um, just basically showed that if you get a bot to watch them, a human, demonstrate an action, let's say move a wine glass up and then wipe the spill, or maybe go to the um, elevator and press the button, if they just do it 50 times, just video, the bot is watching a human do it 50 times, it will be able to replicate that task 85% um, accuracy. It, it does, even with failure modes, like let's say um, you're, you're teaching them how to push the chairs after a, a day where people are sitting in the chairs, move it back in to the table. It can do that really, really well. And then just yesterday, NVIDIA announced that they have a breakthrough in training. What they've done is they say that if you first show it a uh, human just by video watching somebody do a certain task then you add their simulation it it just accelerates how quickly that that bot can now replicate it so this is january this is february march all of a sudden demo after demo of demo and then people are saying oh that's just a demos but it's like it's not just one company it's every company have been able to show this it's phd students it's universities, it's all the companies in China, it's NVIDIA. They're all showing you that the training part is actually not as hard as everybody thought it was going to be. And so now all of a sudden, it's a race for mass scaling of the bots. That's the hard part anymore, as opposed to, oh, can it actually do a certain job? The other thing I wanna point out to people is that when they say it'll be years before a humanoid bot, yes, possibly if your definition is generalized, uh, you know, humanoid activities, which is any job, right? But there is already, you can just go pick and place, which is pick anything that shows up on this shelf and put it in anywhere on this shelf. Just that alone, why not do that? And you could just do, why can't, that can already be a very successful job for many. That's what companies are doing. Some companies are doing. Uh, so you mentioned that Figure has partnered with BMW. Um, of course, Tesla has announced that they're going to have a couple thousand bots Basically, there are already bots in their factories this year, and by next year, there'll be a couple thousand, and in mass scaling the following year, sold to customers. Then you've got Aptronic has a partnership with Mercedes. Then you've got um, Sanctuary, a Canadian-based company partnered with Magna. Magna was the one that built the Rivian cars, or the, I'm sorry, not the Rivians, but the Karma cars. Um, Fiskers. Fiskers. And they've got partnerships with many other <clears throat> car companies where they build the cars, or they build the supply chain of those cars. And so... You know, that's just one industry, uh, which is automotive, but there's partnerships all over the place with retail and so forth. So it's hard to keep track with these partnership announcements. It's just really through the roof. Magna is a huge, huge automotive uh, parts yeah. company. They also do tons of in-house engineering yeah. because that's because they don't want to just make your stuff. They want to make stuff better. They do make the Toyota Supra, the BMW Z3, the Mercedes G-Wagon, um, and they've made a lot of cars over the years. The real disconnect with Fisker was uh, Fisker wanted it done their way, and Magna was like, well, mm -hmm. that sounds terrible, but you're the customer, so I guess we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Now, you now correct me if I'm wrong. This is something I think I understood from Scott recently, is that 
those the reason those actuators were a thousand dollars was because nobody was making them right. because there was no use for something so precise yeah. but now you could if you're magna or someone like that yeah. start making those precision actuators and know with certainty that you're going to have 10 customers a hundred customers all looking for something like that yeah is that right no absolutely so actuators was the one of the rate limiting reasons why uh, humanoid bots only started to come now. There was a breakthrough in being able to make it that small. So the the way that I was explained to me, I, one of the things I've had the pleasure of doing, Scott Walter and I, is interview, I don't know, at least 10 CEOs of these different humanoid and human scale bot companies. And so we dig them and ask them questions. And what one of them told me and is that, I won't reveal who, right? But basically that you can have an, a bot and you can show a demo, right? It's gonna pick things up and it's doing it well. But our joints are incredible, right? This elbow joint, because I can have it for, oh, how old can I be? A hundred years old and it still works. I could pick up heavy objects and it'll still work. Of course, I might have joint damage and others, but you know, the most perfectly designed joint is the human body. Well, these actuators that these bots make, they might work well in a demo, but if it's depending on heavy, they'll break within six months. And that's what they're finding. So you need to design the actuator in such a way that it's you know high frequency use, different weights, and still survive and still succeed and so forth. So they are working on that. They're creating this. The interesting thing about, of course, Tesla is, is they are a manufacturer. So that's advantage one. They've made many different kinds of things. And so they've they've and then they've got the the brains to be able to create, you know, new breakthroughs. But what Elon just announced just a few days ago was that they are waiting for hardware revision three for Optimus, which will come out by the end of this year. And then once they have that, then that's the one that's gonna make a couple thousand for next year. And what they're doing is they're creating 22 degrees of freedom for the hand so they can actually play a piano. And then what they just, what they, when you study the human body, the actual muscles that move the fingers is actually in the arm. It's actually in the forearm here. And so this, uh, these muscles control, like he said, like a puppet, when you pull this, this goes down, when you pull this, it goes. There's obviously muscles here too, but. That's why they're redesigning this whole forearm to be able to have ligaments or muscle-like instruments. That is not that is not an actuator. That's not a muscle. That's not a metal metallic gear. That's something brand new. Nobody's ever done that before. They're gonna have to invent that. And so then, if you carry that forward, okay. So they do that, but they're able to be their own manufacturer. They can make that at scale. How do other car, uh, robot companies make that? They, 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 have they buy it off the to, shelf and, there is and no shelf. get it There's for no too shelf. much money. Right, and the, well, there's yeah. no shelf. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> but like you say, if they do buy it off the shelf, then they'll have to pay, you know, some sort of um, upcharge for that. But there's no one making this. So this right. is um, another advantage, yeah. So that's uh, interesting. I think the big question everybody wants to know in conclusion is, um, when do you think they will finally have a robot that learns how to love are you sad <laughs> now dude now. now have you have now. you have you seen the integration with all these you know llms that are out there uh yeah chat GPT it's very partner with that, that figure and these llms today you watch it you can speak to it it can speak back to you it can it can trick you. it's already past the turing test where you can't even oh, know sure. if it's a human behind it or if it's a bot it's uh it's it's being taught by I was talking to a Google DeepMind researcher, and the debate was whether or not um, you, to get to AGI, do you need to have embodied form factor or can you just feed it videos from YouTube? And his argument was that you surprisingly you th he goes, can you imagine that I think you can get AGI through just YouTube videos, uh, just watching videos on the internet? And the reason is the range of emotions it can ingest from videos of the dramas and TV and all that. It's just so much that it can replicate that. It can understand emotion. Um, so if it wanted to show love to you, it can manipulate you like a puppet, dude. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. My only concern is if it's training off YouTube, would it actually find the intelligence to train on? I kid. I kid. There are great corners of YouTube, uh, but there are also some real head scratchers. Uh, another good use for a robot. 
So there you go. Scratching heads. Guys, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? What is your um, biggest fear and your greatest excitement about the future of humanoid robots and beyond? Uh, head on over to Herbert. See what he's up to over there on Brighter with Herbert. Get brighter if you don't mind. Uh, and everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual. Leave a comment because that's what drives the algorithm. Doesn't cost anything, I'm told. And everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you. A clever robots on the flippity flop. <laughs>